When I was little, I was scared of the night. As soon as the lights went out, I would run and hide underneath my blanket. I don't really know what I was afraid of. I couldn't tell you if it was monsters or bad guys. I just had this all-encompassing sense of dread that something terrifying was out there in the dark. This fear was with me for years, until the first time I saw the stars away from the city in the Welsh countryside. And I realized at that moment, as best described by the poet Sarah Williams, that I've loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. With my newfound bravery in the face of darkness, inspired by the stars, I would lie awake and wonder about the universe. Why are we here? Why does our universe even exist at all? How did life form on Earth? Are there other planets like Earth? And perhaps the biggest question of all, are we alone in the universe? Is there anybody else out there on another planet, lying awake in their bed in the darkness, thinking about the same questions that I am? I had so many questions, I drove my family crazy. Why this? Why that? How does that work? How do we know this? I grew up before the internet was found in every home, so I just exasperated the local librarian instead. And I realized that many of my questions, especially the really big ones, didn't have answers. Not yet. I'm still driven by these big questions today as an assistant professor of astrophysics at the University of Georgia and a principal investigator of our university's exoplanet formation group. We work at the intersection of artificial intelligence and the astrophysics of planet formation. And it is my job to lead and direct the research that brings us closer to answering some of humanity's most fundamental questions. Like, are we alone in the universe? An exoplanet is a planet that orbits a star that is not our sun. Studying exoplanet formation is crucial to understanding why we are here. Because as we peer into the cradle of planetary birth, it's like having a time machine that allows us to look back in time to the formation of our own solar system. Because we are not special. We formed using the same physical laws that formed every other planet out there in the universe. So if we want to understand where we come from, we can do this by understanding where other planets come from. But it's hard to find exoplanets while they're forming because they're so faint, they're hidden in darkness. But we can use artificial intelligence to find the light. OK, so what do we know so far? To date, we've discovered over 5,000 exoplanets. Now, this sounds like a lot, but it is a drop in the ocean compared to the sheer number of exoplanets in the universe. Our night sky is teeming with stars. This image is a long exposure photograph taken in the Atacama Desert in northern Chile, away from light pollution. We know from exoplanet search missions like Kepler and TESS that, on average, every single one of these stars has at least one exoplanet around it. Now, there are about 400 billion galaxies in the universe, and about 400 billion stars in every galaxy. And since all of these stars have planets, this tells us that there are at least 100 sextillion exoplanets in the universe. This is 10 to the power of 23, a one with 23 zeros after it. <laughs> Let's put this number into perspective. I want you to imagine all of the grains of sand on planet Earth. We would need 100,000 planet Earths to have enough grains of sand to equal the number of exoplanets in the universe. Now, if we want to understand how many of these 100 sextillion exoplanets could be anything like Earth, and if they could be, potentially be home for life, then we need to find them and study them at the moment of their formation, because that's when the most fundamental properties are set. And there are two key characteristics that determine almost everything about an exoplanet. It's mass and it's distance from the central star. The exoplanet mass determines if it will be small and rocky, like Earth, or large and gaseous like Jupiter. The distance from the central star determines the planet's equilibrium temperature. 
and whether it will be cool enough or warm enough to host liquid water, the key ingredient for life, on its surface. Now, these two key characteristics, mass and distance from the central star, are set almost entirely by the exoplanet birth environment. Exoplanets are formed in protoplanetary accretion disks, these thin, rotating clouds of gas and dust in space that orbit a central protostar. Planets form over time as particles of dust coalesce to form pebbles and then boulders, and then the biggest boulders sweep up all the other boulders until we end up with systems of planets. Now, these exoplanet systems come in a huge variety of configurations that often don't look anything like our own solar system. There are hot Jupiters, thousands of times more massive than Earth, that orbit so close to the central star that their year is as short as one Earth day. Rocky super-Earths, up to twice as large and ten times as massive as planet Earth. Cold ice giants, under so much pressure that diamonds rain down in their interior. Scalding lava worlds, orbiting in an ellipse so close to their central star that the change in the orbit causes the planet to expand and contract and it keeps the surface in an almost magma form. Now, if we want to understand how often Earth-like planets form, then we also need to be able to explain how this dazzling array of exoplanets came to be. Because any theory that explains the formation of Earth-like planets must also be able to explain hot Jupiters, super-Earths, lava worlds, and planets that rain diamonds, because the laws of physics are the same everywhere, at all times. If we want to understand us, where we come from, and our solar system planets, we have to understand the other planets in the universe while they are forming, because that's when their most fundamental properties are set. Artificial intelligence can help us to do this and bring us closer to understanding whether or not we are alone in the universe. So how do we find forming exoplanets? It's very challenging because they are so faint, they emit very little light. Instead, we search for indirect signatures. This is a little bit like looking at animal tracks in the sand to work out what sort of animal left them behind. Were they heavy or light? Did they move rapidly through the sand, taking leaping strides, or more slowly? Now, some exoplanets leave really prominent indirect signatures that are very easy to find like the beautiful rings shown here in the planet-forming disk HL Tau. The exoplanets change the local pressure in the disk, which results in a pile-up of dust. This dust then radiates light at longer wavelengths, and that's what we see here is a very clear signature of planets. Some forming exoplanets leave indirect signatures that are much harder to find, tiny changes to the velocity of the gas in the disk. Even the most expert human eyes don't always find them. This is the ideal task for artificial intelligence. AI is not like me or my graduate students. It doesn't get bored or distracted while looking at thousands of similar images over and over again. And as long as the data that it is trained on is of a high enough quality, it also makes far fewer mistakes than we do. So imagine you have thousands of images of cats and dogs, and you want to sort them all into the ones that have cats in them. This sounds like a huge daunting task, right? But we can use a type of AI that specializes in image classification and object recognition to help us. This AI learns to identify cats by looking at examples of them over and over again, a little bit like a human child. Maybe it gets confused between a cat and a dog at first, but after it's seen enough examples, it gets it right far more often than it gets it wrong. And then I had an idea. I realized that we could use this exact same method to find hidden forming exoplanets. But there was a huge barrier, no training data. The internet is filled with millions of images of cats and dogs, but when I had my idea, there were only 30 resolved images of the formation site of exoplanets, these protoplanetary accretion disks. This was, as everyone in my field thought at the time, a fundamental roadblock. We can't change how much data we have. What I did realize, however, is that my research group has world-leading expertise in state-of-the-art simulations of planet formation. We use some of the world's largest supercomputers to understand how protoplanetary disks evolve 
under the physical laws that govern the universe. What if we take these simulations, like the one I am showing you here, and made this our training data for our planet hunting AI? So we train on our artificial simulations and apply it to our real world telescope observations. So alongside my brilliant graduate student, Jason Terry, I got to work. Over a period of six months, we performed thousands of simulations of planet formation. And we trained our AI, and we tested it, and we trained it, and we tested it. And then one day, it worked. We found a forming exoplanet that had been missed by conventional human-led search methods. Real telescope data is messy, it is noisy. It's not like the polished images that we get from NASA. It's difficult to work with, and it's difficult to comb through which is why this forming exoplanet, hidden in darkness, had been missed by human eyes. But our AI found it by realizing that the gas near to the planet had been disturbed, just like looking at footprints in the sand. Using simulations was a crazy idea. I was met with hesitance from colleagues around the world. They told me, too much uncertainty, too much missing physics, Cass, this is never going to work. I felt defeated, but I couldn't put this idea away. Big questions like, where do we come from? Why are we here? And are we alone? Key to understanding who we are as a species. And I knew that my idea could help us answer some small part of these big questions. But we view AI as this big, bad dark, just like my childhood fear of the night. It's a fear of the unknown. We're scared it will take our jobs and replace us. But AI is a revolutionary tool, like every advance in human history that has upset the economic and social order. The wheel, the steam engine, electricity, the internet, AI is a product of human ingenuity, a tool crafted by us, for us, to extend what we are capable of. Perhaps we should change how we view AI. Yes, it's new, and change can be scary. But like every star in our night sky, it is a beacon of opportunity, ripe with the potential for discovery. Finding forming exoplanets hidden in darkness it's just one example of its almost endless possibilities. It's hard to say for sure what any of our futures will look like as we stand at the dawn of the AI era. But I'm not scared of it, because I've loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. Thank you. <laughs>